Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Should I know say a herb seed? Featuring Marino. Yo, what's going on? OBZ from OBZBeats.com. You know what it is. And it is the weekly vlog. And this week we have... Let them know who these people. Let them know who you are, brother. Yeah, my name is Moreno, a.k.a. Skin Devil. I'm an Austrian rapper, you know. Also making many songs, writing for other artists, you know, ghostwriting for pop artists <laughs> in Vienna, Austria. <laughs> That's what it is, man. I've never, I've never actually worked with an Austrian artist before. I've never, I don't think I've ever spoke to an Austrian artist before. So it's interesting to see what kind of, like how your culture and hip hop go together. Do you know what I'm saying? I understand. It's Danger. gonna be interesting, man. It's gonna be very, very interesting. So let's jump straight into it. So, what age did you merge into music? Uh, what age? Well, I merged into like kind of was like 18 years old, you know. Okay. And I really went and went into hip hop. Of course, when I was little, hip hop was already around. You know, you got yeah. people like Coolio, all those 90s stuffs, you know, and Puff Daddy, you know. And then later when you go to your teenage age, then, you know, first when you're 16, 15, you're just listening to it. And then like an age of 18, you're like, okay, I want to try it out. You know, if it's good, it's good. If not, then fuck it, you know? Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> I get you, my real shit. Okay. So real shit. where, like, where, can you remember where you were? Like what location you were in when you wanted to become an artist slash rapper? <clears throat> Oh yeah, well, I was in Hungary with my oh. grandparents, <laughs> and this, this was funny. By the time MTV was showing, you know, um, it was only straight like like only hip hop music videos. Like uh, you okay. had the t top ten um, yeah. music videos from MTV, and you know they used to play Dre, Snoop Dogg, and Eminem was on the second place, and the third, uh, first one was like I don't know, Busta Rhymes. And yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, freaking yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so like, is that way, is, so that's when you realized you wanted to be a rapper, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and, and actually through Coolio, I was like, like starting to like the, the hip hop genre, you know? Through yeah, Bad no, I get you. Paradise. I was like, oh yeah, that's music, it's, you know, this genre. I get you. No, I get you completely. Okay, that's sick. So like, I suppose this next question kind of tangles into what you were just saying, but um, who was like your like most listened to artist when you were growing up, or who was like most inspirational to you as an artist when you were growing up? Most inspirational, <clears throat> I would say, is people like like D12, Eminem, yeah, Obi Trice, yeah, um, Julio, Tupac, Notorious B.I.G. But also all the Wu Tang uh, members, you know, like um, Method Man, Jizza, Riza, You God, you know, Ghostface Killer, and all of them cats, you know. And Tech Nine also really grew into my heart. And and now I'm listening more also to the 80s stuff, like you know, like Big Daddy Kane and all those type of people. You yeah, know? man. Yeah, um, man. The Rocky. <laughs> Some very, very good artists. I'm not going to lie to you. I used to listen to a lot of D12 and Eminem and things like that and when I was growing up as well, you know what I'm saying? When I was a youngster too, so I know exactly where you're coming from with that. It was very powerful music. <laughs> the Real Eminem powerful. show was my first <laughs> see, rap CD I purchased. <laughs> Bro, it was fucking brilliant. I absolutely loved the Eminem show. I have my got, I have favorite is still my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, so like, what are you most passionate about in regards to music? What I'm most passionate about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about, you know, um, you know, there are certain things that really, you know, people are giving me like stones. Yeah. It's like they block you because the thing is, I don't know how it's in, 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 at your place, but in my place in Vienna, Austria, people, they are more like, like those, they call themselves like social justice warriors. Right. So if you don't appeal them, if you not appeal to uh, them by their standards, yeah. then they're like, you know, F this guy, you know, they don't want to help you. They don't want to do with you nothing because you have to be like political correct. And my lyrics, I, I, I don't know if you heard one, they're really harsh and lots of controversial. 
Yeah. And, yeah. But, you know, I'm like most passionate about it because I, why should I be stand for those politician, politicians? They're all corrupted, yeah. you know, by the government. They don't even run the things that they claim to run, you know? They <laughs> I don't do you. that. So, yeah, no, I feel you completely. I really do. I don't want to do anything. I just want to do music. I want to do music for the people, for the streets. We're actually uh, poor. Even I'm a little bit poor. But slowly, stepping st by step by step, I climb up on the mountain. I try yeah. to reach. Even though sometimes I fall down, but then I stand up again, brush myself off, and then start all over again. So, you gotta yeah. do it man like there's lessons there's always lessons everywhere man from everything like i was saying um i was saying to another an artist that i was working with recently did an interview there's a silver lining under every single cloud you know what i'm saying there's always a lesson that you can learn like real shit like real yeah, shit exactly, all of these yeah, things exactly. all of these things so look why do you make the music that you do brother because i love it it's my passion i love it i I, so why I, this I, specific I, genre like why this genre why not? like i said you know like i said like i said in earlier um coolio really talked to me i mean i love the yeah. way he was you know wearing his uh hair you know he was so strange yeah, and great. then even eminem yeah. talked to me because of his comedic uh, parody that he used to parody you know Britney Spears and Christina Gagalera and stuff yeah. like that <laughs> <laughs> and you know i was I like I was catching all those elements and you know, for hip hop, when you do rap music, especially rap, you, you uh, how you say, you get emotional, but you can do certain kinds of emotion. Like you have this funny feeling, you have this depressed vibe, then you have this hardworking vibe, you have the aggressive vibe, then you have the yeah. gangster vibe, you know, all stuff, you know? Yeah. And you can do, you can even reach people better. And you know, I forget to mention that for like three or four months ago, I was, you know, performing uh, in an underground club and okay. there were old people there, you know? And of course <laughs> I was, you know, I was performing rap music, you know? Yeah. But it was rap and reggae, it was a mixture. And those okay. old people are, were dancing, you know? The, he was taking his old lady and, you know, let's dance, you know? It was yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah. man. So he no, thought it's you. just, you know, connecting people. That's it. It's, you know, it appeals to a lot of different people. I think age and, you know, all that kind of stuff is just bullshit. You know, you can, you can be any age and like hip hop or, exactly. or rap or whatever else, you know what I'm saying? Like slaughterhouse music. I don't, I don't fucking know. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Slaughterhouse. Yeah, like real, talk, <laughs> real stuff. Real stuff. <laughs> but, um, okay, cool. So no respect for that one. Um, so do you have any rituals or routines before you go in the studio? Yeah, I smoke my weed and drink alcohol. Okay, okay. I hear this and quite a lot. I hear this quite a lot. <laughs> I hear this quite a lot. Yeah, man, it seems to be quite the thing to do, smoke weed or do some kind of like, you know, narcotic or whatever. But it's right though, because like, I, I'm not gonna lie, I've done drugs, different things like this, you know what I'm saying? It does open up the mind, you know what I'm saying? You can perform better, you can do different things when you're on some kind of substance as opposed to just like not, you know what I'm saying? I, I understand why people do it. It makes sense. <laughs> it makes, it does, it does, yeah. actually it does. Because I gotta be honest with you, because uh, when I was performing, before uh, my first time when I was performing, I was like yeah. really nervous. And when you have those, you know, some certain things you pop and you're like, you know, the nervous is going down and you're just ready. You just, you're, you're going crazy. You're acting wild. You just want to, you yeah. want people to be like, who is this crazy dude, man? Yeah, no, I get you. <laughs> no, I get you for real. I really do. There's a kind of calm that comes over you, but then there's a hype as well. There's that mad energy that you get as well. The, yeah, exactly. You have this mad energy. You're like, like you know, you can rugged. You know, you're tough and everything. <laughs> your pump, your blood is pumping up. You know, pump up the volume. Pump up the volume. That's it. No, nah, real talk. I know exactly where you're coming from. I do. <laughs> I do. Okay, so like, did you teach yourself to rap, or like, did anybody mentor you, or like, was there somebody that used to rap and you used to like? You know what I'm saying? Like, who taught you, like, particular things? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, are you all self-taught? Did you learn yourself? So, as I said, also, earlier before, uh, I live in, in Vienna. And, you know, the thing is, people don't really um, help you, mentor you. So, I had to learn all by myself. So, okay. I was, like, putting on 
CDs from not just only from Eminem. I was also listening to his influences because he said yeah. in his uh, that Master Ace, A Z, Nas, and yeah. and all those people were influencing too, and Ice T. So I was listening to them, you know, how they were yeah. doing it. And it took me, I gotta say, to be honest, it took me a while to figure it out. How should I really flow with my music? Yeah, because yeah. you know. When you write a verse or a rhyme, it's one thing, but how you flow it and how you put it on your music, yeah. it's another yeah. story. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it really is. So self-taught, my friend. And I'm still learning, of course. I'm not, I don't want to sound cocky and say, oh, I'm the best. I'm still learning. I still yeah. have to learn. I still need to want to prove, you know? Okay. Now, respect, man. Definitely. It's always a learning. There's always learning to be done in regards to any kind of craft. So I definitely get that. Definitely. It's like me as a music producer. I can't say that because I can make a trap beat. I can make any type of music and that's that. It's, it's game over. No, it's not like that. I understand, man. <laughs> definitely, definitely. There's always room for improvement. Always room for exactly. improvement. Exactly. Always, always. Respect, respect. So look, are there any resources that you use that have helped you advance in your career in music? So like... Is there anything that you've used on Facebook that's helped you to gain more followers? Or is there anything that's helped you, uh, I don't know, maybe advertisements or something like that on YouTube that's helped you get more subscribers or views? You know what I'm saying? Like, what advice could you give to the artist that was where you were when you were a youngster, you know what I'm saying, who's just starting out now? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a funny story, if I can say that. Um, you know, when I, I was, uh, there was times I was really depressed because I yeah. was like, my channel was not growing. My views were not really, of course, they were up, then they were down. Yeah. And I was so freaking depressed. I was like, what the F I'm doing wrong here, you know? And suddenly yeah. out of nowhere, you know, I made a contact with uh, one of the group member of the Outsiders. Uh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. We started to talk about, you know, here and there. And then um, I was asking like for a verse or something. And then he said, yeah, sure. Then, you know, he recorded his stuff. Uh, I had, you know, delayed stuff because, you know, I was working with all other artists too. Yeah. But then when I laid my verse, uh, he also had a friend, you know, and uh, his name is Michael Coleman. He's also from Jersey and he knew Pace one too. So yeah, they both knew each other and somehow... He showed me, Michael Coleman showed me um, what kind of uh, steps you can do, what kind of advertisements you can do, where you can put a little bit money on there and you get interviewed or you get this, that, blogs, um, everything, you know, uh, the, the EPK kit, you know, I didn't even know what the F that yeah. is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So slowly, then uh, suddenly um, my music and my, my subscribers were like rising, you know, it was like crazy then and then he gave me some you know um outputs so where i can also put them in music charts it's not necessarily a commercial charts but you know for yeah. underground artists where yeah and usually i used to uh, compete with those trap artists <laughs> okay so what what is yeah. this website where can people find this uh, you can find a number one music charts.com it's okay. uh, run by doris lynn She's really okay. amazing, and her company is called Monster Promotion. Monster That's the name Promotions. of her company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. it's really awesome. And then I is had that, also... Hmm? I was going to say, is that a worldwide thing? Is that worldwide music? Or it's, it like... actually, it's, it's actually, the place is like in Dallas, in Texas. Mm. Okay. But they also make a promotion globally. So you have also a global chart, you know? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Worldwide. Um, and she even shows you, she mentions you, she's tagging you everything, you know, she's doing that and she lets you know how, how business is and, you know, okay. and that's how suddenly my channels used to grow up and it looked an even better on my YouTube channel, you know, and so I, I was more pumped to do more music, to put out more music because I know people still listening, maybe not in Vienna yeah. so much, but like in the States, in the UK. Yeah. For example, yeah, New Zealand, Australia. Okay, no respect. So you're getting out, you're branching out across the world bit by bit. I like Yeah, that. bit by bit. It's a small step, but, you know, it's better than nothing. You of know? course. And I'm happy for that. I'm really happy because, you know, I had those depressed years, but now I feel like more, I can do more, you know. Even though sometimes the issue I still have that I already told you about, because, mm. uh, you know, but 
I'm not giving it up. I still want to do it. I still going to make it, you know? It is no, I respect, what it is. man. Definitely. Don't let anybody put you down, honestly. Like, if that's something that you want to do, then you do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Fuck what anyone else thinks. If it makes you happy, then fuck, fuck what other people think. Because if it makes you happy, then do it. If you're not, as long as you're not killing children and stuff or, you know... Like, I used shit, to rap. Shit, I still people, rap right? about killing children, but I don't kill children, man. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go, then. There you go. It's a whole different kettle of fish. So <laughs> let's let's move on. Let's move on, because this could this could be incriminating as fuck. But um, what oh, would you shit. say is your best musical quality? So, like, is it your flow? Oh. Is it the way you write? Is it the way you control an audience? Like, what is it? Oh. I don't know. Uh, it depends, man, because uh, like you said, um, my best music quality was in the performance and it was here in Vienna. And I got to tell you, this is a crazy story. OK, I was like asking one of those people if I could, you know, go with my brother and perform there. And they said, yeah, sure, sure. You know, entry is free. You can have a drink. Be beer is for free. You know, you have. Yeah. I was drinking like three bottles of beers. <laughs> I was really like drunk as fuck. <laughs> okay. okay. And suddenly, when the, when the the audiences arrived, and there were like there were no hip hop fans, there were just straight heavy metal bangers, headbangers. Okay. You know, I was yeah, like, yeah. oh shit, where the fuck am I? Am I in the right place actually? So I was talking to him, <laughs> yo, dude, am I in the right place? Or well, where are the hip hop fans? Uh, there are none. I was like, but you can still perform. And I was like. Oh, shit, give me another two beers and then I will perform. <laughs> oh, so not. he gave me two, two bottles of beers again. And I was like drinking. I was a little dr drunk as fuck. And then we were performing there. And we received. Oh, what's going on here? Everything is okay? Yeah, everything's good. Go on, carry on, carry on what you're saying. We had a positive vibes from those heavy metal because I was performing. Okay. All right. I was performing there. I was like, you know, I was going to the crowd. I was making, I was making them jump to our, our music, you know, oh, even sick. though our music was not really a party song. It was more reggae, reggae. -ish. Yeah. And they still were bump, uh, vibing to it. They were bumping to it. And even when we were performing We Crazy, because We Crazy is one of my most controversial songs. Yeah. Because um, I rap about shooting people and I dress like a pope and have sexual intercourse with little kids, you know? Oh, and fuck. they still bump to it. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. my brother's rapping about how my brother's rapping about like how he got, uh, how he lost his virginity by by our parents, you know? Oh fuck, that's a really fucking, <laughs> it's, it's really a really pressing vibes, yeah. Song, but people loved it, you know? Yeah. They loved it. They were they tried to even memorize the lyrics, and after our show, they came to us and you know hey, can you sign us an autograph? Where can we find you? You know, Instagram and everything. I was really like, wow, man, we, yeah. they loved us. I mean, it's, it was like a rock star feeling. You know what I'm saying? Okay, no, respect. It's crazy. Respect. It's crazy, man. I'll never forget that evening. Shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good evening. Sounds like it was a good evening. Man, bit of a night, man. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it, man. Real talk, real talk. So, look, what do you wish you knew now when you started rapping? Uh, I wish that I would have not spent too much money on my hip-hop clothes. <laughs> yeah. Um, because everything, as I said, it's all, all money, you know? Yeah. The beat, the uh, recording um everything you know the, the advertisements the, everything what you put into but i never give up as i said i love to invest because i know that one day it will pay off the, uh, oh, yeah. the thing that i invest you know maybe it's not too much for me that i invest and invest and invest but i know one day it will pay off because as i said i'm learning i um improving myself too and yeah it's just a matter of time man it's just a matter of time Okay, no respect. No, I feel you completely, man. There's a lot of people jumping up on the mic right now, do you know what I'm saying? Especially like 2019, like we're in now. It's been insane and you've got these fucking idiots who are jumping up on a microphone and they're just going, blah, 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 and they're just talking shit. They're not even talking about anything. 
you know what I'm saying? It's gone from like, don't do drugs to do drugs in the matter of like 20 years space with hip hop and, and this type of stuff. And it's really fucked up. So yeah, man. No, I oh never, shit. I definitely understand you. It's fucking, fucking crazy. Absolutely crazy. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> but um, okay. So like, how do you feel about your music and how like how people engage with it? Are you like, are you happy with it? Like, does it does it make you think about things when they you know comment? Obviously, if they're commenting like shit stuff, that's just like, oh, you're shit. Obviously, like you know, I hope you don't take that in because that's just a troll. But like. You know, like, <laughs> what's your kind of like? Give them to me. Yeah, like, what's your number? Like, how do you feel about like the way that people engage in your music? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you were saying earlier in the club with the rockers and stuff, and they they were jumping up and down. Like, what kind of like engagement do you get on social media? Well, I didn't have it much, to be honest. Yeah. Not really. Not really. Um, I had, of course. Um, maybe two or three death tre- uh, death threats oh, you know shit. yeah because uh, i remember when i started i my first song that i re- no it's not my first song but one of my first songs okay i put it on youtube and the song was titled les and okay. it means lesbian and it was a yeah. lesbian voice so i'm i was making fun of uh, lesbian people who are lesbians and even you can, I was even putting a thumbnail where, you know, gay marriage, the solution is when you have a tight rope, you know, hanging the noose around their necks. Wow. So that was my thumbnail. You're a serious guy. You're a very, very serious guy. You're going to go and face I, a lot. <laughs> then I, I used to spam for the LGBT, WXYZ, you know, I was sending oh, my music man. to them. I was saying I was searching in Facebook groups, you know, gays and lesbian. I was like spamming my song to them, and holy shit! I do kid you not. They were threatening me to come to my house and cut off my dick. <laughs> wow! You should it's work. Story, with, you should true work story. with. Uh, you should definitely work with one of my clients. His name is Bellicose. <laughs> Um, he lives in the same place, like in the same town that I live in, and he's a very dark, dark rapper. Okay, I think you two would get on very, very <laughs> dark well. rapper, very well. <laughs> but, but yo, but you know, the thing is, in the end of the song, I even said that lesbians, I love you, it was just a joke, don't take it seriously. Yeah, and I was like doing a kiss, and like. Mwah. Like, yeah. Voila. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, they didn't, and, and most of them, they admitted they didn't even listen to the last part because they were so furious about the first and second verse that I was <laughs> laughing about them. And, and even the hook, you know, the hook was like, I will, I will, I will kill their parents for, because they, they made them sure that their kids are lesbians and, and wow. shit. <laughs> and I wow. will even take their children away <laughs> and kill them all. So, yeah. Serious, but I told very him, controversial. You know, it is very controversial, but you know the thing is, I'm not scared. You know, I talked to them. I was like, "Yo, listen up! It's just a uh, comedy parody spoof song. I have nothing against you, LGBT, X, Y, W, Z, whatever. P, yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you know, whatever. My, you know, what you doing behind your closet? You mean I don't mind my business. You mind your business, and I mind mine. So I don't care. Yeah. But you know. The thing is why I made this song because I just don't like how the people are trying to shove it in our throats, you know? They must yeah. be there, the person, this man. Why, man? And even in kiddie movies, they're trying to like gender neutral uh, characters. Yes. I mean, yes. the, I get you. On. I get Fuck you. I really shit. do. I get it. I do understand it. So this is the main reason why I do those songs because... Uh, it's a one thing that you come out, okay, and you say you had to make a choice, but you cannot say that you were born by it. Because a baby was not born by telling, yo, I'm gender neutral or I'm whatever, demigod or what the fuck they invent now. I get it. I do. I do understand. Me. It's a choice. It is a choice. I think, I think, I don't know, my, my opinions really aren't valid on this situation, but I do, I do think it's, there is choice to a degree and upbringing um but then you know it maybe it's more fucking uh feminine you know hormones in the body than you know male you know 
I don't know. Like, there's, there's, I don't you're going into scientific stuff now. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I'm not a doctor. I don't. Man, know. fuck those scientific. They may be, they're being, they're, they're being paid by the government, man. <laughs> Yo, shit. <laughs> they're just making those weird ass shit yeah man it's all it's it's just you know it's crazy man uh if you knew the things that i now knew then you would be shocked that everything is just you know it's already um planned you know it's been planned how to slip it easily and to make the generation dumber and dumber you know what i know I'm saying? i i i bro, honestly, that is the I reason why i kind of rebel with my music you know because like I said, I do this reggae rap thing and it's gonna be an album called One Strength and Unity. It's with my me, myself and my Jamaican homie from Jamaica, Herb Seed. Yeah. So our album will be, we are also discussing, I think there are three, four songs that we are singing and rapping about it that we don't give a fuck what you are doing, but leave our kids alone. Why do they have to suffer through that trauma? I mean, yeah. come yeah. the fuck on. It's common sense, you know. I don't care if you're this or that, okay? But you should, uh, with common sense, every every no normal person with a common sense would know that this is just plain bad, you know. People, Pete, you gotta understand. Some people aren't as awake. A lot of people are still stuck in a nine to five routine. They go home, eat their dinner, watch TV, go to bed, do it all again, and they sell their time for money. Do you know what I'm saying? But like. This is a whole other conversation that me and you can have at another point. I swear to God, because this is something that I feel very strongly on as well. I know I know what you mean. And I know where you're coming from. Religion and all these different things. It's different belief forms and different things. It's all the same God. Yada, yada, yada. Bro, I, I, yada, know, exactly. I know where you're coming from. I really, really do. So oh, this is actually why I do this kind of music. Not to, you know, provoke or, you know, make fun of them. Oh, well, yeah, actually, it's... Uh, I'm happy to make fun of them because, to be honest, when I even rap about it, yeah, I, I think like, man, this shit sounds so ridiculous, but it's ridiculously good. <laughs> you know it is what it is, man. Like some people will take it with a pinch of salt. Some people will like it. Some people are gonna hate you. You're gonna get that in every single thing that you do. You know what I'm saying you're gonna get critics. You're gonna get haters. You're gonna get fucking obsessive people. It is what it is, man. Just, um, exactly. But like I said, it's. It, not many death threats. These are the only death threats that I had, but um, oh, usually people are just, you know, not <laughs> the only people who give me really attention is like, like people from the UK, America, Australia, New Zealand, hell, even I even made a fan from Vietnam. He was like, hey, a new fan from Vietnam. And I was like, yeah. hey, cool, man. You know, so when I listen to my music, um, I'm, I'm actually happy that I'm doing it because I... When I listen to it, it represents me, the way I feel, the way I talk, you know, the way I do my things. It's just me, you know, I'm not copying anyone. For sure, I have my influences. Like I said, Eminem was hugely a part yeah. of my most influential rappers, but not only him, even D12, mostly Bizarre, the fat guy from D12. I yeah. mean, I love his shit. I still listen to his solo tracks and he is, man, he's, my favorite song from him is I Don't Wash My dig you know you got to check that out it's that's his single from bizarre okay. i'm gonna check that out i just listen to bizarre from d12 and all that stuff <laughs> wow, so i know how bizarre bizarre is trust me i already know oh already know. so you know how he is yeah he's i know fucked up. <laughs> he's fucked up he's bizarre <laughs> just by his name is bizarre real shit okay real so shit. literally that is that is literally it that is literally we are wrapped up, bro. We are done, diddly oh. done. But no, much done, love. Done. Thank you very much for jumping on with us, you know what I'm saying, and doing this. Uh, it's a half an hour interview, so that's really good. People are obviously going to get to know a little bit about you, you know, and, uh, you know, how you do with your, your, your rapping and all that type of stuff. But let these people know. I'm going to let them know as well on the next, on the, after this video is done, where to find your social media. But just shout out your social media name so people know where to find you. All right, you can find me on YouTube as like Moreno Skin Devil. Instagram, you can find me also there, Moreno Skin Devil. And I've got a fan page and it's also called Moreno and Skin Devil. So you can find me there or by the name of Camille on my Facebook, whatever. But you know, mostly it's Moreno Skin fucking Devil. Hey, trust me. <laughs> I have to check out some more of your music, bro. This is going to be very, very interesting. 
very very interesting oh indeed. shit oh shit <laughs> i even have a song i even have a song it's called like uh, smoking marijuana this is where i openly you know say that when we smoke weed and you know i feel really more um concentrated to the music yeah. that i do so yeah, no. okay so i don't know why my country forbids it you know because they say thc does bad and kills your brain cells man get the fuck out because of here. it's because they can't make money from it and that's the real that's the real one yeah, right? i know but anyway that's it that's all we got that's time for it. everybody okay, let's go i will <laughs> I see need to you go to on sleep. the next one <laughs> much love to everybody who checked in Thank you very much, Moreno, for checking in as Thanks. well. Thank you too, Sammy. Thank you too, man. No I appreciate it. No problem at all. See you all soon. Karege music could never die. No matter how hard Babylon wants to try, yeah. Love your sister, love your brother, love your sister.